there really is only one place to start a tech tour of California. We are, of course, talking about Silicon Valley, a 500-square-mile chunk of real estate just south of San Francisco. It's home to hundreds of the world's leading tech companies, which collectively employ nearly 800,000 people. We're here for a reason. We're in Silicon Valley to test Kit. And that kit was all-in-one PCs, desktop computers that come straight out of the box and are all under £1,500. But to test them, we needed a workspace. And workspaces don't come slicker than this, the amazing Landjet, an executive office on wheels. It also came with two private chauffeurs. Hey, Stan and Stan. I'm Fran. Stan and Fran! Stan and Fran, who we met at Cisco. Stan Francisco! What are the chances of that? It's ridiculous. Jace, get in the car. Stan and Fran, uh, the reason that we've asked you to come and help us out with this is that we're trying to test what we consider to be three of the best all-in-one PCs. And the way we're going to do that is take them to the very front doorsteps of the companies that make them. And the first computer on our list was the latest all-in-one from Sony. 1730 North 1st Street. Is that Sony headquarters? Oh, yeah. Brilliant. All right, perfect. Perfect opportunity for me to tell you uh, just the basic spec of this machine. 24-inch full HD screen. Also, most impressive in this screen, it's 3D. It looks great. It I'm looks good. The actual looks of it are, are very swish. The keyboard is yeah. nice. You know, if you're going to write large documents, you'll be fine with that. And it is a touch screen. I love this about it. The touch screen thing really works for me, especially when you're nice and close like yeah. this. In fact, I think we're here. I think we're just about here, Polly. Look. I'm sure I could get used to travelling like this, Jess. I could. The test we did was layering up several processor-hungry programs uh, and, and functions all at the same time. We began by loading Sony's web page, set an MP3 music file to play on loop, then ran a flash browser game and a copy of FIFA 12. This is one of the most processor and certainly graphics card intensive uh, activities you can do. Yeah. A 1080p music video was then opened before dragging and dropping a huge 32 gigabyte bundle of files onto the computer's desktop from an external hard drive. And as they're copied, mm -hmm. it should add to the uh, general craziness that's going on with this computer as we layer up all these different applications and functions. The final thing was to convert a full HD video, so 1080p, into an MPEG-4, while still running all of the other programs in the background. This is where we really get the figure that we're going to use to compare ah. our three computers. We're going to time, going to time see how the long conversion it of this. Now, everything is going on in the background. Uh, are you ready to start, start the timer? I am ready. Uh, three, two, one, go. We'll have one figure for each computer, and we can compare between the three. Great. So, the Sony, with its speedy Core i7 processor and 8 gig of RAM, appeared unfazed by our test. FIFA's still playing. Yep. MechFu's still playing. The video's there. Twang yep. is the video. The MP3 file is still oh, going. Just two minutes, 53 seconds. OK. Well, we don't know whether that's good or bad, bad or, or indifferent. indifferent. Yeah. So, with little more than a hunch that the Sony had been pretty fast, we moved on to our next contender, the 27-inch iMac. And that, of course, meant moving on to Apple HQ. So you're looking at 2.7 gigahertz Intel i5 processor. It's also got 4 gig of RAM and it has two Thunderbolt ports. Uh, yeah, it's two times faster than USB 3, which is the fastest port that we've seen on the Sony Twice so as big as USB 3? Yeah. And that is a beautiful screen. It is, it? and it's not just the size of the screen, it, it's actually the clarity of it. It's actually higher than HD quality. It's uh, 2560 by 1600 pixels. Wow. So you're looking at something that's pretty special. OK, Jace, we're here. Let's do it. It's amazing, look. <laughs> so, back in the van, we put the iMac through the same test as the Sony. But how would it fare? And go. Is it just me or has that video been juddering a little bit? So I was thinking exactly the same thing. It was kind of struggling a little bit uh, with the processor intensive applications. We're nearly there, Jace. Nearly there. 98%. Stop. 3 minutes 23. Really? Yeah, I'm really surprised. Are you? I thought it would be a little I, bit quicker than that. Yeah, me yeah. too, actually. With an older core i5 processor and inferior 4 gig of RAM, the iMac was a full 30 seconds slower than the Sony. So, test two completed. But it appeared we had company. Only on the Apple campus did we encounter security guards. I just thought it was very interesting that we encompassed within the iPhone or the iPad 
is exactly the same obsession with security that we found physically visiting Apple's Silicon Valley HQ. It's extraordinary. It's been good. Don't feel that welcome, but <laughs> it's been good. Moving swiftly on, we headed to our third and final location, the headquarters of Azus, where we were going to test their latest all-in-one PC. This one has got the least powerful processor out of all of them. This is the 2.5 gigahertz Intel i5 core processor. You're looking at 6 gig of RAM. It's also got one of the larger hard drives at 2 terabytes. Touchscreen works, did its job. Easily a match for the Sony, really nice. Keyboard's not half bad. The mouse is standard, but it's doing stuff with the sound. Yes, it does have two internal three and a half watt speakers and it comes with this subwoofer as well. So you get a little bit of a groan, you get a bit more oomph. However, our exhaustive all-in-one testing had taken longer than we thought. By the time we got to Azus, it was dark. Nice! Woohoo! Right, let's go. On paper, the Azus was the least powerful of our three computers, but how would it cope with our test? Three, two, one, go. Oh, look at the video. See that? That, that just, then. it did, didn't it? So its ability to, to multitask is, is being Struggling. compromised, yeah. yeah. 94%, but already it hasn't finished yet, and it's, it's already the slowest of the three. Well, that has to be because it's got the least powerful processor. Yeah, I think, I think that's what it's at. 99% and... Stop! 523, a whole two minutes slower than the Apple. Wow, I was, I was disappointed. It's, it's a shame because in so many ways, it's such a compelling package from a yeah. design point of view. Some of the extras that you get, the speakers, I love that. Yeah, I think it's a really nice touch. Yeah, 10 point touch screen, the subwoofer. Look at that video. Is it froze? Yeah, it's still, <gasps> the timeline, no. the timeline's still moving, but the video itself is frozen, it's, it's killed it. No, that's, that's not good, is it? So we can only award the Azus three Gs after it stumbled at the last hurdle. The Apple iMac also gets three Gs. Design-wise, it's impeccable, but this sub-1500 pound model spec disappointed us. But it's four Gs for the Sony. Thanks to a responsive 3D touchscreen, one gig graphics card and speedy i7 processor, it's a great all-round package.